Hasta la vista, baby. Okay, so Gilo is no Terminator. In fact, its bark is a whole lot worse than its bite. Hi everyone, and welcome to another video from Planet Codebot. I'm James, and today we're going to be having a look at the robot Gilo from Lego Mindstorm's Robot Inventor Kit. Gilo is a four-legged robo canine. This model is marvellous and surely has to be the most impressive of all five robots that can be made out of the box, at least from a technical standpoint. In today's video, I'm going to explore how Gilo was built, investigate how the four legs work, and then dive into the coding to see just what is controlling this robot behind the scenes. As always, we will complete a step-by-step -step guide to all of the coding for you to follow along to. If you enjoy our video, please like and subscribe to see more content. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Planet Codebot. Unlike other models in the Mindstorms collection, Gilo uses four legs to move, instead of wheels. This is quite a feat of engineering, and is very impressive to see. Before we look at the coding, I wanted to share some footage showing exactly how Gilo is able to move. Gilo uses a complicated four-motor setup to walk. Each motor moves back and forth, pushing the attached legs in an elliptical motion. A little bit like the wheels on a steam train. If we slow the video down, you can really see this to full effect. Gilo is capable of moving forwards, backwards, and turning left and right on the spot. It isn't the most mobile of the five robots in the package, but it's certainly the most futuristic looking. The robot is also a little bit limited on features when compared to the other bots in the set. This is just a price that needs to be paid for such a complicated movement system. I certainly think it's worth it. Gilo does have a few tricks built in. Pressing one dedicated button will make Gilo push off its back legs and do a handstand. Pushing the other trick button will make Gilo jump backwards twice. This model has the colour and light sensor and the distance sensor included in the original design. There are a few activities that come straight out of the box which use these functions. However, there are many more possibilities that will no doubt be discovered and shared down the line. In order to make this guide as thorough and simple as possible, I'll be breaking down the coding into four different parts. Startup, movement, resting, and commands. To start, we're simply going to establish a few basic commands for the intelligent hub to follow. These will affect the light on the distance sensor and the LED matrix, as well as playing a startup sound. All of these options are changeable, but they bookend the program nicely. Start with a yellow when program starts brick and add a distance sensor light up brick. Make sure you select the correct cable slot for your build. Ours in this example is slot E. Set the orientation of the intelligent brick to right and start the pulse animation. Next up is the movement. Fortunately for us, LEGO have created a robot brick pre-programmed to help with Gilo's movement. This saves us a lot of work, as there will be an awful lot going on behind the scenes with this one. Set up four green remote control input blocks, one for each of the four main directional movements. You can choose which input you would like to move Gilo, D-pad, analog stick, on-screen button, etc. For all four movements, add a set legs to position, set speed, and start moving block. This is all you need for the movement. However, we do need to fine tune it. Forwards and backwards movement should be set to a speed of 75% and minus 75%. Remember that minus speed reverses the direction the motors move in. You also need to set the legs to walking position as shown in the example. For left and right movement, set the speed to 40% for both sides. Set the legs to turning left or turning right position depending on which button you are programming. Like with the previous models we have built, Gilo also needs a line of code to tell the robot what to do when no commands are being given. This is a useful safety step for any robot, as it allows us to program the robot to stop if it loses contact with the remote control, 
or if the user abruptly stops giving instructions. Add a final green remote control block and select no from the drop down menu. This means that the code written below will only come into effect when no buttons are being pressed. Pick a yellow broadcast block and select stop. This will tell the robot to broadcast a stop command when no buttons are being pressed. This isn't enough to work by itself. Stop, just like any other word, is meaningless by itself when coding. Certain languages, like Python, do have some inbuilt command words, but usually we have to define what we want a word to do. We will do that now. Add a yellow when I receive block and select stop. This will now tell the robot what to do when the stop is broadcast. We will then use a green operator block alongside a blue sensor block to create an if statement. If the timer is greater than one second, the program will stop all of a stacks of code and tell GLO to stop. Remember, this timer will only start if no button is being pressed. As mentioned earlier, GLO can be programmed to perform small tricks. There are two tricks that we will code in this example. Both tricks start with a green remote control block, followed by a red set legs to model block. Ensure you select two different buttons for the RC blocks, otherwise your commands will override one another. From there, set the speed and the movement accordingly. You could have a go at adjusting these later to see if you can create some new tricks for GLO. That is everything. You have created the code for GLO from the Robot Inventor Robotics Kit. Well done. Now that you've finished, have a play with your new Robo K9 Pal. Maybe you could create some tricks or games for GLO to play. There are many different options to explore with this set. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.